Good evening, everyone, fellow classmates, Dr. El Sayed. This is Karim Sol um, Sinina, Joanna Solis, and Jane Muskowski. Now, I'm Mike McAllister. We're team number one, and our project was focusing on quantifying the viability of UAPs. And we did this by first looking at the problems that arise from, theory to, from failure of critical components, and taking those failures to create mathematical models, and using those models to create predictions that will improve the viability in the future. So, like I said, the goal of our project was to um, analyze the viability of UAPs, and to analyze the viability of UAPs. And for example, we would love to be able to say that uh, in two years, over two years, the viability will be 85%. Unfortunately, that number is wishfully high and also wishfully difficult to arrive to. And throughout the course of this presentation, we'll explain why it's so hard to come to a solid number on that. The general flow of our project looks a little like this. We started off with the problem statement that UAVs are very unreliable, and so they can't accomplish all the missions we have in mind for them. And that creates a strong motivation for us to then go out and solve these problems. And the first step in solving these problems was to actually identify what we mean when we say reliability of the drone. Because for every mission, the definition of success changes. Therefore, the reliability changes as well, or what contributes or takes away from reliability will change with that. And like I mentioned earlier, the problem, the problem here is that we have a lot of, drones are creating a huge new market with a ton of new applications, but the problem is that they're not reliable enough. And these applications range from uh, package delivery to crop dusting, all the way up until surveillance and missile, missile strikes. So drones are, are reshaping the landscape of industry, and that makes it especially heartbreaking because they're not reliable enough to do the cool things we want them to do. Okay, so just to touch on what Mike said, um, this um, this motivation and urgency to design UAVs for reliability, like more reliable drones, is because of this vast market. This vast market with all these new innovative, um, innovative applications. So basically, um, by able to quantify the reliability of a drone, you're taking the first steps into the design aspect and improving the design of these to make these innovations and applications actually feasible. So some of the application was made by the U.S. Defense Department. So here we mentioned three the main examples that why the drones are very used on the U.S. Um, Defense Department. The first one is the MQ-1 and MQ-9 Predator. These drones are based for combat mission. So what they do is to follow the target what the operator has to do. Um, the second example, we have the Dragon Eye, is also developed more for the U.S. Marine Corps. So these type of drones are very small, also they are very light, and the purpose of these drones is to monitor urine areas or urine assaults. And our last example is the LQ2A, LQ5. These uh, drones also are very uh, small, they fly to a medium altitude, and the good of this drone is that they are not detected visually or on the radar. But nowadays, uh, also companies like Amazon are interested in drones. Uh, Amazon wants to develop a system that they can improve their delivery service by using these drones. But also another application could be the precision agriculture. What they do, drones do on that part is to monitor the crops, the fields crops, in order to um, improve the water, the water stress management. Okay, so basically what we did here is we took the system of a drone and broke, broke it down into four main sub-assemblies. You can see here it's the air, airframe, mechanical parts, electronics, and communications. Each one of these sub-assemblies are critical for the drone to function, actually. So by developing models for each one of these sub-assemblies, you can start to work and develop and quantify the reliability of the system for Drone. Our system reliability will rely heavily on the four sub-assemblies we mentioned in the slide before. Now, the, we're defining the reliability as the probability that a mission is completed at a given time. So this includes having the airframe be able to handle the load it needs to carry across a given flight path or uh, be able to handle the impact of landing. Also, the mechanical and electrical components need to remain in control during the flight and the communication system needs, needs to be able to effectively send its instructions from the computer to the UAV during flight. So we're going to 
discuss some of the applications of uh, studying the failure data in uh, some other cases. University of Minnesota studied the catastrophic failures of UAVs uh, and failure data. They wanted to increase the reliability of the system by a factor of 10. They were trying to redes redesign the system and through studying catastrophic uh, data, they were able to find that they needed to create redundancies in the system. Something as simple as redundancies increased the system reliability by 65%. Also, uh, Mueller and Deandra studied the uh, impact of losing one or one through uh, three propellers during flight. When we lose one propeller during flight, we don't want a catastrophic failure. So they were able to create an algorithm which would rebalance the system with, with the loss of multiple propellers during flight. So instead of having catastrophic failure, the system was able to adjust during a time of uh, critical need. Using uh, these examples and more, we were able to create our model. So our goal is to analyze our sub-assemblies and in, in the end, we're going to be able to recommend the improvements we find with the most critical and unreliable components in the system. Okay, so now here we're going to be starting to model each one of these sub-assemblies. So we're going to start with the airframe. Um, so the airframe is basically the backbone of UAV. Uh, it's, it holds all the components together. Um, it's structurally strong. It's made out of lightweight materials, aluminum, carbon, uh, fiber resin composites. Basically anything that has a high power to weight ratio. Um, they're, they're made with uh, high safety factors to uh, assure that when, when they're landing, there's no there's no issue with a uh, fracture within the material. You can break it down into these three components. The centerpiece, which is usually an aluminum ring, motor supports, which are basically the rods that hold each motor if you're looking at a multi-rotor system, and then the landing gear. Um, the thing is, they're, they're built to be strong, but the main concern would be uh, material fatigue. So over time, um, will the material's fracture strength still be strong enough? And, this decreases over time due to a number of reasons. It's due to a lot of a combination of cyclic and static stresses that happen during flight. Um, basically, uh, there, there's defects within the material and um, these stresses initiate cracks and make them propagate. And when the crack length reaches a certain critical length, the material fracture would not be able to hold. So uh, the attribute here to fatigue, the biggest one is vibrations. Like as I said, this is due to static and cyclic fatigues. The cyclic fatigues are from uh, changes in acceleration, such as um, takeoff, landing, and rest of maneuvers. And the static fatigue is the load or the weight of the, the chopper, whatever it carries. This leads to a phenomenon called fatigue work hardening, which is basically um, you localize stresses. Um, in certain areas of the structure, in nodes of the structure, and the stiffness increases, the, the stresses are amplified at that, which leads to crack growth and fracture. Um, basically, you can characterize this, but over time, the number of failure rates are going to increase because the materials get weaker over time. Um, you can characterize it by a bunch of different distributions. The burnbound Sanders distribution is also known as the fatigue life distribution. You can characterize it really well, where you have two parameters, alpha and beta, as the scale parameters. And basically, you can treat it as a series system where the reliability of the components will give you the airframe reliability. And then, we're going to the mechanical parts. And as you know, mechanical parts are parts that move. So, I was going to break it down into three parts. Motors, servo, servos, and propellers. And seeing as, first we're going to start off with motors. Because motors have moving parts, they have increasing failure rates. But the average lifetime for them is about 10,000 hours. However, this number is actually a lot lower because motors most likely most often fail due to failures in electronics. Next, we have the servos. Servos will control the flaps on the propellers that allow them to rotate. So if a servo fails, it's almost as if a propeller fails because you can't make the drone do what you want to do anymore. And these are in most need of redesign. And now we have propellers. Okay, so these are just a few of the equations of motions that govern how a drone flies. And I had to show you how to show you these because inside of these equations lies the math that makes a drone a K out of N system. And most of the time we talk about K out of N systems, we're talking K out of N pairs. But as Jan mentioned earlier, a man by the name of Mark Moiler created a um, software that enables drones to fly with less than four motors. So yes, amazingly a quadcopter can work with only one propeller. So here's the case of just one broken propeller. The drone slows to achieve flight and they collect all this data. And then even works with two on um, two broken propellers, and even again with three broken propellers. Well, here 
here in the electronics parts, uh, we attribute the failure to the weather or sometimes to the prior error. So here we want to develop the import parts, the receiver, the phase switch, the electronic speed co uh, control, and the battery elimination circuit. This is the most common for failures for that part. How the phase switch works? They have four modes. The first mode is the pilot mode, which provides a full manual control remote. The second one, there is the manual high level control mode. It has two loops, one for altitude and one for position. So when those sensors fail, this manual mode is active. The program control mode is only the sensor for position. So as soon as the, so the GPS fails, this mode is turned on. And the automotive, and the automotive mode, uh, it works when the telemetry on the command switch also fails. So what happens when the first switch stops working? The motor stops spinning, and of course we have a lot of communication. So in the next part, we have the electronic speed control. So what does they do? They, they receive signals from the autopilot and send it to the electric, uh, to electrical motor. So the failure occurs here because of the burn in or when the high current, there is a high current in the motor or also when they over the limit the force current. The receiver is in charge to receive the signals from the RC controller and send them to two components, the phase switch and the pulse width modulated switch, uh, chip. So when this part is a uh, fail, we have a malfunction of the servos and also from the sensor. And the last one is the battery elimination circuit. So this is in charge to deliver electrical power, uh, mainly to sensors. But what happens when this battery expires? We, the USB lost control. Now we're going to go into modeling the communication system. So uh, it is critical that the communication system works because the set of instructions for the UAV flight path are within this instruction. So uh, it is um, the most common accidents for UAVs are caused by a lack of um, communication and the loss of control of the UAV mid-flight. And this is becoming increasingly a problem and it's not good to have a UAV without instruction because it will just fly up and crash. Uh, here we are modeling the communication system. We can also break it down into more sub-assemblies which are dependent on each other. This all goes from the ability to send instructions to the UAV effectively. The probability of success of the communication system depends on the probability that the instructions sent from the computer in the operator's hands to the UAV and that the flight is successful with proper uh, takeoff and landing. And this is also uh, dependent on the sensitivity of the receiver and the power of the signal that is being sent. A lot of failures are due to interference with the signal in the system, uh, a lot of noise from any electromagnetic in, uh, components of vibrations, all of these uh, contribute into the signal interference, which in the end creates a loss of control in the system. Okay, so now we're going to basically look at the mathematical models of each one of these sub-assemblies. Um, as you learned in class, then we can, we can fit distributions to each one of these models and then achieve a system reliability out of that. So, as I mentioned before, the airframe, it, you, can, you can classify it as an increasing failure rate and uh, model it with the uh, burn down sound loose model, the fatigue light model, because we're mostly concerned with material fatigue and that. So, as you see here, um, uh, for the mechanical parts, you see it's an increasing failure rate, and you can, because the parts are moving, the failure rates are increasing, and you can characterize that with the Weibel model. And for the electronics and communications, um, these are all electro electronic parts, as we learned, they're constant failure rates, so you can classify each one of these components with the exponential decay model. And this is our fault tree analysis of the system. As you can see here, our four sub-assemblies, airframe, mechanical components, electronic components, and the communication system are in series. So with one, fa uh, with one failure, we can have a system failure. Our current reliability of the system is going to be calculated as the product of all four of these reliabilities. So now I'm going to get into some of the improvements you can make for these parts of each of these critical components. 
For the airframe, uh, the main factor, as I mentioned before, is the fatigue work hardening and the reduction in strength of the materials back. Fracture strength, so you have to, you could look at higher quality materials that are less susceptible to this like localized embrittlement of it. So you can you can think about alloying the materials and looking at beta data and finding areas where the fractures occur and reinforcing that area. You can, and, but you also have to be mindful when you're alloying or, or changing the material uh, stress corrosion because some alloys are susceptible to in corrosive environments such as hydrogen embrittlement to increase the the stiffness of these materials make them more likely to propagate cracks. And when it comes to mechanical parts, a good way to increase survivability would the first definitely use that software we talked about that allows the drone to fly with um, less than four propellers working. And then actually when it comes to civilian drones, they're not using propellers that are meant for drones, they're just taking airplane propellers or more or less airplane propellers. So those aren't optimized for drones. So if we were to use Put more research into propellers that are meant for drones that would increase the viability of those. And then also with the serv servos, like I said, they, they're in the most need of redesign. So we need more, more fail safes that will prohibit servo failures. And if they do fail, to do something about it. For the electronics parts, as we stated before, this uh, subassembly follows an exponential distribution. So starting from that, we can apply the concept of redundancy into each component. So for example, in order to increase the reliability in the battery elimination circuit, we can make the avionics battery redundant. The only concern here in this part is that when you add the battery, you have to isolate the circuit in order to, when one battery uh, doesn't work well, it's not gonna affect the other one. And for the communication system, it's also the same uh, distribution. So adding redundancies will increase the system reliability. But also we're going to go into research for a higher quality component where a signal with a higher power is able to be uh, handled by the receiver sensitivities in order to make an effective instruction. And, okay. and we'll also be able to look into a way to have a greater strength against signal interference when in flight. Okay, so to wrap it all up for uh, system improvements, uh, you generally have to look at the failure data see which components fail more frequently, add your redundancies or improvements to the system, and then reevaluate the reliability of the system. So to conclude, um, we, we modeled the reliability of the drone, and we took the first steps into the, uh, pushing towards the design of these drones that are more reliable. Um, we, we did this by breaking it into sub-assemblies, modeling each one with their own distribution and then uh, found suggested improvements for each one of these subsystems. What are your questions? <laughs> the end. Very good. So let's talk about the presentation style. So, uh, Mike, you tend to speak too fast. Uh, it is not a burden. You come to tell people what you have done. So don't look at the presentation. I want to get over with. It isn't the case. Slow down. You know, just you have the material, just deliver it in high volume, slow down, like you say. Can you present it? There's a really well, it's good. Um, thank you. I know you did reasonably well, Jane, you did very well. I think uh, it's always when I say very well, means uh, there is no stopping point, it means there always room to improve, right? Oh, yeah. So they practice together and they do a better job in this time. Now, let's go to slides. Just take it in the slide at random. First of all, the slides are not numbers, so I wouldn't know which slide to go back to to tell you. Well, slide number 15 is bad. Would you? There's no number. The number of slides, so we need that question as to what you okay. Let's go back and to the slide, the typical slide, in one, maybe whatever number, in one at random. Just take a couple of them. So keep going a little bit. You know, you don't want to have enough text. One with text. Yeah, let's go back to the one you showed before. Yeah, go more. Yes, uh, one. Go the more. other way. Keep going. Sorry. Well, it doesn't matter. Okay, how's that one? Okay, well, uh, that's fine. <laughs> then I made that one. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you, almost did it. you almost did it right. What, is, what puzzles me is. You write the word aluminum alloys. 
right? Why the A allows an uppercase? Is it needed to be an uppercase? Why? Because the composite is an uppercase. Why allows an uppercase? <laughs> so the, now you go through the slides, it's the same. Many of the same expressions in the middle of it are seen for an uppercase, or then this is not. So you be consistent. You go to the slide. You know, look at look at this for example. Right, this is the servo is in the middle. Servo's up and everything is small. Why? So so I want to I, I, I just, my point is just be consistent. Look at the higher quality servos, all uppercase. This one is another one. That, that's the same. Okay. HS, H, HQS. Yeah, just go in the yeah. Okay. You, you, this is all kidding, over. It's all over the slides. What I need you to do is just be careful, consistent as well. Right. Consistent as well. Okay. Go back and when you look at the breakup, you know, breakdown of your system. Fault. At the beginning, you uh, I like your faulty tree, but it's not faulty tree. You only have an OR gate. What is the rest? A faulty tree, you go from the very beginning to the down line. to the lowest level. I, I know, but I didn't but know where you couldn't fit it in the, in the slide. There is a slide one, a slide two, the communication and the one, you break it down. <laughs> what do you mean you cannot fit it? This is our fault. It's not true. It's not true. You need to, you cannot present that. That is our fault tree. Okay, let's take another time. Well, when look, you go back in the frame, you have three components okay. landing gear and the circle piece and so whatever. You, that, you break it down. Can fit because you know this three. So it's a lower gate or end gate. Depends where your end gate is. So in a mechanical system, the same thing, you break it down to the lowest level. So I wanted to learn how to do this because that's the key. Well and actually you can use a faulty tree to obtain overall system really detail. Right? Yeah. And so among all this, which one is more critical? You can come back to tell me what well, you know. His literature data shows that. The mechanical is the biggest problem in UAV, in those whatever parts we have down there, or rotors, and propellers, and others. Fail. Or electronics. You need to start quantifying these, or at least in the future, the military have data about that. They'll tell you what's available and what percent of the time which one of these fail. So you can quantify this a little bit more. In the couple of slides, Jen, you went over some slides with nice pictures in it, and I was hoping that you'd see the picture. It just brushed me. I said, well, move on. Um, well, why do you have that slide with the picture? There's a couple of slides and pictures in there. Yeah. But then you can go back to it. I, I, I got nervous. I forgot. Well, Wait, you're going too much. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you are, you are too much. Correct. You made too many slides. But I go, 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 go back to my. Yeah. It's after, after electronics. Okay, you're going the wrong direction. These pictures, right? Oh, sorry. No. It's a lot of pictures. I'm just... No, you're... Oh, maybe the, in the literary review professor. Yeah, I think this is the literary review. No, 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 communication. No, communication. Okay. Slide number. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Slide number. 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 Slide I was, supposed to, I was supposed to go into the computer control, sending a signal, and receiving it, and this is... Don't move. And then this, <laughs> this is, we have some angles going on. Oh, you know, I know, it's very impressive, but I don't know what this is. I know, I got nervous, I forgot to say it. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't get that. So here is a training. It is not here, you're uh, offering your job. See, it's you here. Fire, you know. okay. <laughs> See, exactly, you got it. And noise as well, okay? Yeah. Okay, that, that is what I immediately struck me. Yeah. The system, right? And so if you have something like that, you talk about it. Or rather, uh, don't do the test. There is not down or back, all the way to the end, towards the end. <laughs> and towards the end, when you talk about uh, have a picture of something, and uh, no, no let's go back to the front. There are some pictures. The pictures Maybe are just, just yeah, that, go back to that. That's what I had in mind first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, uh, no, these were yours, Mike. Yeah, figure, figure, but you don't talk about the figure. It's not a figure, but what does the figure say? Oh, what, so what's the figure? What, okay, what's the, go back to that Which one. Which slide is on the servo? <laughs> Mike is speaking. Literally the servo. <laughs> <laughs> it's back and forth. Yeah, this, how is speak, this. this is how we speak to This is how we speak to You go too fast. Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> so you, there's a purpose of this one, correct? You need to speak, talk about this. There are two graphs. You just show it and leave. That's already there. We'll talk about it.
Next slide. Doing the same stuff, continue electronics. Oh, you want to go to electronics? Anyway, here, yeah, what is that slide in the left, in the bottom left? That's the bell switch. What is that? The bell safe switch. Says it. How it looks like. So, what is the yeah. point of showing me a switch? Because it's supposed the audience doesn't know how they. Oh, well, you said it, you mentioned there. Oh, you, you know because you are in this, but the audience is supposed to know what, what the person is. If you have a different circular design, <laughs> would they make a difference okay. to them? So that ought to serve a purpose. Let's move this slide. That's the thing. What is C? What is that? Down. The fixture, what is that? It could be anything you pick up from the internet. And Besides, you pick up from the internet, right? Yes. Where is the reference? Is this okay. yours? No. You cannot take anything from the internet without referencing. Okay, this is from this code. Oh, I understand. Okay. You do it. The same thing here with the R receiver. What is that, okay. sir? Well, I mean, there's a picture, there's a purpose for it. What is that? To show you the oh, R receiver receiver. I, I'm not sure how this is going to affect him. So, the R receiver receiver. Okay. So, you don't, you don't like pictures? I, well, if it, I, it has to serve a purpose. We can talk about it. Okay. All right? Otherwise, it's just to show you a picture. So, oh, okay. You talk about it. Okay. Right? So, the, and the same thing in PEC. All right. Now we have it written on top, but what it does? What, what does it do? It draws an audience. Exactly. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. okay. Well, you, these are things where, as you move on, you find two things. Yeah. Your falsity is key, it's so important. How yeah. it's fair. Right? You, spend more, you spend more time on it because actually you can write your equations for an ability from the faulty. Alex, you may have to Is this that. one acceptable? This one? That's fine. That's good. The reference is fine. <laughs> okay. Okay, so in the comments for the group, feedback, we need to make them give a better presentation this time. You know, be critical of them. This is good. <laughs> no? Did they, they pay you to keep quiet? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a no, a question. Do you, right. do you think it'd be better to have one person present for a longer period of time? So we like, like I feel like as as a, an audience member, I'd like to get to know the person as they're talking. And not, there, there was a bunch of switching. Like I think, I think there was like one one slide that one person had to present, and then it went back to another one, and it kept flip flopping. Okay. Uh, is that is that like a good? Uh, too many of these are really good. Yeah, yeah. So I think the flow of one one takes one area. And stay there for some time, hand it over. Now I finish my mechanical system. You know, Jane will talk about the communication system and spend more time with it. And so I think, so it, it, but so we, we, broke, we broke it into the four parts. We all took one part. That's what we did. But I noticed, but, but you jump so many times back and forth. And we wanted to get okay, some, we, some sharing of the beginning part, you know. Okay, at the beginning, but, but not many times. That's what is important. Okay. You can yeah, do that. Kind of disoriented. Yeah, you, you can if do I'm it. picky. No, I saw that too. Yeah. Okay. That's very good. So it's a good start. And then now, of course, you have to do a lot of work to quantify that. And then you tell me up the three and three pieces, break it down to the components, and show me how you use the three and three. Right? It's good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Questions? Yes. Other comments? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank now, traditionally, the group's leaving sets up the presentation for the next group. Okay. Yeah, All right, thank you very much. Send me on. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Should I just have flash drive? Um, we could just go from drive. That's why they're already logged in. Are you guys ready for Google Drive? We downloaded ours. Like, yeah, I know. They should have done that as well. Thank you. We downloaded it. Thank you. Thank you.